Hey y'all, welcome back. Um, I am trying to get out here to the garden. We're about to have a storm here in just a couple hours and uh, I wanted to get out here to the garden and try to trellis some of these tomatoes up to make sure they were gonna be good and stable in case we get heavy winds. Uh, and I thought I would just show you um, the method I'm using out here in the greenhouse garden, how I'm trellising, and then I'll probably, if the weather permits me to walk out there to the tunnel, I'll take you out to the tunnel and show you how I'm trellising out there. Little fact about me, I am a wannabe horse rider. Uh, I've, I've loved horses for a long, long time. And just recently, within like the last year or so, I started taking horse riding lessons. Um, a really good friend of mine, was kind of in the same boat as me and a couple years ago she started taking lessons and that um it really inspired me to just kind of go for it so anyways i've i've been taking lessons for a little while i've, been, I've had a horse for not quite a year now um it's so funny though because i've always wanted to know how to ride horses i've always wanted to own horses but i have this I wouldn't call it a slight fear, probably a moderate fear of horses. Um, just because I know what they're capable of. Um, I am, I'm a nurse and so uh, years ago I worked in the, in the um, ICU and uh, I've seen some horse injuries. So uh, I know very well what they're capable of and I also know that I'm not invincible. So I definitely have a fear of horses and uh, about, maybe two months ago now my friend who is also the beginner horse rider we were out riding and she um had a pretty bad injury she ended up breaking her clavicle and um so that really and that same day my horse was acting kind of ridiculous my horse's name is roper he was acting kind of ridiculous and um anyways ever since then I've, I've just been like not really wanting to ride a whole lot because of the fear and so I got out there this morning and did some groundwork with him because I'm just like you know what I'm not gonna have a horse to be a lawn ornament I'm gonna have a horse to ride a horse so that's kind of the boat I'm in right now so if you're having any fear about anything just jump in there and do it so we did some groundwork with Roper this morning and he did okay um not great but okay but part of that was because i still don't 100 percent know what i'm doing when it comes to groundwork uh, i need to get better with that so so out here in the uh greenhouse garden tucker castleberry boy oh my gosh um we're doing the florida weave method so i've actually never done this method before i've, I've known about it but i've always trellised my tomatoes on cattle panels um, I'm trying to kind of move away from that, however, just because we're, we're using our cattle panels for other things. The price of cattle panels is going up. Um, they're still pretty affordable, but I'm just trying to move away from that. So, um, I'm using the Florida Weave method out here in the greenhouse garden, and I'm going to kind of show you. I've, I've already um, noticed some areas where I kind of messed up, and we're going to correct that today. So, let me let me show you how we're doing it. So we've got a couple of rows, well, three rows of tomatoes. Well, more like two and a half. So this whole row here is all, you can see I need to do some serious weeding over here, is all tomatoes. Um, and this is the Florida weed method. So basically it's, we have a tea post there, but you can use any sort of stake you have. And you're just gonna take twine of some sort or string and you're gonna go in and literally just weave it through your tomatoes. So this side and then you'll come on this side of this one and then you'll come on this side and you'll go all the way down until you meet your other post however i'm noticing what how i kind of messed up here we need we actually need more posts in here so the fact that this bed is so long and i've only got two posts one on either end it's really not providing a lot of support for the tomatoes. And I actually had a couple of tomatoes that snapped. See, you can see this one here. He's struggling because he's not had, he doesn't have enough support. Um, but anyways, I have, I've had a couple of tomatoes snap at the base because they didn't have enough support. So I think the, the way to correct that is really just to come in and put extra post down here so they'll have some more support. So that's what we're gonna do. So this one here is actually one that um, snapped at the base. That's why it's leaning over, um, but it also needs more support. Uh, so basically I just kind of dug a hole and stuck it back in the ground. I'm gonna see if it won't um, 
just grow some roots and reestablish itself. Uh, I don't know. At first I was thinking it probably wouldn't, but um, it's been looking, this happened maybe three or four days ago and it's still looking pretty good. So it may do okay. Um, I did have a couple other that snapped like this one here, the one that was here snapped and it died. So I put this one here um, and then one down there did the same thing. So we'll see. That'll be interesting to see if this one uh, can kind of reestablish itself and work out. That'd be cool. After the fourth one. Mm -hmm. um, so we're just going to take T posts in here and put them between like every fourth plant. Yeah, that'll, that'll be fine. That way, um, the string doesn't have to be as long. I think that'll provide a little more support for these guys. Okay, so we have four T posts in this bed. Here's one here. And then about every fourth plant, we put another T post. That way I can go in and correct this um, string here or this twine and make it a little more stable for these plants. I'll show you that. Um, but literally, I mean, it's so easy. All you do is you come in tie it so let's see tie it there and then you just weave it between the plants and then i'll take it around that t-post and then weave it back through and tie it and you just keep doing that as the plant grows up um these are indeterminates so um i think this one is an eight foot t-post so it's pretty high we didn't put it just real deep in the ground it's pretty high up there that one i think is a six foot i think that's all we had left um so we'll see how that goes i may have to put some sort of extension on the t-post as the season goes on but i don't know when it when it gets really hot here in central arkansas and humid the tomato plants kind of start to really peter out about the time they get you know six foot or so so i mean i, I don't know that i'll really need to put much of an extension on there so i chose to go with this string option here this is jute and so it's from johnny seeds the reason i chose to go with this is because it is biodegradable um, it was a little more expensive than, you know, just your typical string, but it was still very affordable. It's just one of those um, choices you can make where you can make a little less waste and, you know, kind of make a difference. So anyways, that's what we went with here. So all I've done here is went ahead and clipped the string that was headed that way. Um, so it's going to be different sections of string here. And I'm just going to tie it off on this T-post. That way, between T-post to T-post, T-post to T-post is only supporting four plants. Um, so the string is shorter, and that way they have a little more support. And I'll show you how I've got them kind of intertwined here. Uh, yeah, that's going to be better. So you can see here got it tied off here to this t-post one side of the string is twining around and they're just literally going on opposite sides and then it's coming around doing the same thing all the way to the end of this t-post and you can you can see there how it twines um but yeah it's just going to pro provide support and as they grow we'll add more string and um, it'll be super simple to take down when the season ends, if I need to flip up, flip this bed to put something else in it, I can just pull these T-posts up. They're not in deep. You can see there. I mean, it's not all the way in at all. Um, and then just clip the string, throw it in the compost pile, and super, super simple. I need to probably move that string down just a little bit. But, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and finish these up before the storm rolls in, and we should be set. Okay, it is done. It took maybe like 15 minutes to come out here and correct everything. Um, so some things just to remember about Florida, Florida weave is probably want posts or stakes of some sort every few plant versus the whole long row. Um, that will give the plant more support because you'll have shorter string length. Um, and then, you know, when you originally or initially plant your plants, you're going to want them to be in as straight a line as possible because I do have some that are kind of out of alignment with the others and that makes it a little difficult to get the strings to um, interweave there. So 
pretty easy, pretty simple, really cheap method. Uh, it should work really well. Again, this is the first time I've done it, so it's hard for me to say, you know, how well it will work, but it's a really popular method, so I feel pretty confident that it'll be just fine. Um, and I am gonna walk you out to the tunnel real quick and show you what I've got going there because it is definitely a different method from this. Uh, obviously, I need to come out and thin my zinnias. That is so hard to do. I don't know if anybody else has a really hard time with thinning, but I do. Um, beans are popping up nicely. I've got, um, those are bush beans planted along that side. I've got some cosmos planted along this side. This is a whole bed of sunflowers that I've got planted that are, have not germinated yet. The arch is going to be all cucumbers. I do have some Salanova lettuces that have popped up that are under that arch. I don't know. I don't know how well that's going to work. It's starting to get warm here where I'm at. Um, you know, lettuces tend to bolt pretty quickly when it gets warm. But I'm hoping as those cucumbers grow up, it's going to provide some shade for the lettuces and give them time to get big enough for me to harvest. We'll see. That was kind of an experiment. Um, I planted squash just the other day all down here. Uh, they have not germinated yet. This is garlic. It needs a little bit longer before I harvest it. That is some unknown flower that I planted last year that self-seeded, and I'm just letting it do its thing. I put dahlias, dahlia tubers in the ground over here, and then this bed is unplanted. Uh, it needs to be weeded, and I need to figure out what I want to put there. Oh, and this is all peppers, this whole row all peppers so we should have a pretty good little harvest in here this is just our personal garden so should be a good little harvest for us to eat some fresh veggie veggies and be able to um freeze some i'm gonna walk in here real quick before we go out there these are my um cucumbers oh look they're starting to pop up that's exciting. I was not expecting that at all. Um, so I've got the, these are the gr greenhouse cucumbers, um, the pic Piccolino and the Excelsior. Uh, I think that was the pickling one and that's the slicing one. So uh, that's what's going to go in the tunnel as soon as they get germinated and big enough. These are a couple extra Cherokee purples that I'm going to, I'll show you. I'm going to need to put those out in the tunnel. I had a couple that did not do well out there. Um, so yeah, let's run out there real quick. We just had some gravel laid out here, so we're kind of slowly but surely building a road out to the high tunnel. Um, so that our driveway over there, and then it's going to come all the way out here. And then it stopped right there. Um, we need to do some work here. So our pond has a natural spillway that just, it stays muddy and wet, and you can't, I mean, you just can't drive over it. So we do a lot of walking um, <laughs> to and from out here, which is fine. But, you know, when it comes time to harvest, that sort of thing, when we're carrying a lot of stuff, we need a way to actually have some sort of vehicle that can go out there. So that's what we're working on. Tyler's putting a drain in and we'll have some gravel put over that so we can actually drive over it. Okay, so we are out in the tunnel now. Um, this is my bed of tomatoes, two rows. They're planted 18 inches apart. Um, and obviously I've got a much different trellising system going on here. Let me show you what we've got going here. So I am trellising to the greenhouse itself um, above on the trusses. So essentially, I mean, it's pretty basic. I just have my string, my jute. It's the same stuff that I was using the Florida Weave um, for out there. And it's just coming straight down and I'm using clips to attach the tomato plant to the, the string or the jute, okay? So I'm gonna turn you around here and show you exactly how it goes. <laughs> I had some visitors come with me. So up here, you can see the, the trusses of the greenhouse go horizontally down this way. This uh, metal post that you see that's going all along the length of the greenhouse, that's three quarter inch electrical conduit, okay? So that's a metal, that's essentially a hollow metal tube. Um, and it's going all along the length of the greenhouse. That's what this jute is attached to, okay? You can see up there, it's attached. We just used some zip ties to attach the conduit to the actual trusses so they wouldn't roll back and forth. Um, and then the jute comes down the length to the ground. 
and then I'm attaching the string to the tomato plant. Let me show you here with these little clips. Okay, so this is also, this is really neat. I've been excited to tell you about this. Um, these little clips are also from Johnny Seeds. Um, Jute is from Johnny Seeds. But these clips uh, are biodegradable as well. So you can throw these suckers in the compost at the end of the season. So they are also a little more expensive than just your typical plastic clips. However, in, for me, they were still very affordable. I felt like that was just a really simple option to kind of reduce waste. And so I did choose to go with these. Uh, so far, I'm really happy with them. I will tell you that... Um, when you get them in the box i got a box of 500 get them in the box they also come in like a plastic uh bag and it comes with a little note that says hey don't leave these in the plastic bag in your greenhouse because they are biodegradable i did that and i came out the next morning and i had um i don't know a whole chunk of them that had like melted together so they're serious about that they they will biodegrade i've seen this done a couple of different ways you can take this string here uh, before you clip it on and you could take like uh you know just some little bamboo sticks or posts and attach the string to the ground and then start clipping the tomato plant up i've chosen to just clip it straight to the tomato plant and as it grows um, you'll just add clips up the tomato plant these plants are going to be hard pruned to one liter and so they will literally just be pruned all the way up the string and about i'm expecting that about the time that these plants reach up here to the top of my conduit it's gonna be that point in the season where my heirloom tomatoes are starting to peter out anyways so at that point they'll just be ripped out and a new crop will be put in at that point so oh molly she's not supposed to be in here uh-uh, girl, you're going to get in trouble. So, super simple method. Uh, you know, each plant gets their own string, okay? Um, I will say that the conduit was on the more expensive side. I cannot remember off the top of my head. We did two 40-foot sections because this greenhouse is roughly 50 feet long. Um, but I wanted a pathway on either end of the bed. So... 40 foot section of conduit so we have 80 foot total it was, it was a little more on the expensive side however this is one of those things that's going to last forever i mean i can use it season after seasons this is a super simple setup it'll be easy once the plants are ready to come out of the ground all i have to do is go up snip 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 all the little knots that i have and this whole section um here of string along with the clips and the tomato plant can go straight into the compost super super simple versus you know, if I were choosing to do string and then the plastic clips, well, those are going to have to individually be taken off and thrown away, and it's just kind of a pain. And I'll show you down here a couple of the plants that, for whatever reason, just don't look as healthy as some of these others. So you can see the, uh, excuse me, excuse me, get out of here, go, out, 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 boomer, out, out, get out. Dogs, I swear. Um... Yeah, like this guy here just doesn't look very healthy. You see how droopy he looks? Versus, I mean, the one next to him looks good. He doesn't. I don't know. Uh, they're getting the same amount of water. Um, so I, I don't know. I don't know if like this section of ground, the way it was amended, just wasn't quite as well amended as the rest. I don't know. I don't know if that's possible, but... Anyways, I may give him, he actually looks a little better than he did yesterday, so I may give him another day or so. If he doesn't start perking up, I'm going to rip him out and um, go ahead and replace him with one of the plants I've got in the greenhouse. Uh, I will start fertilizing with fish emulsion pretty soon. I'll also do a video on that. I've got another one down here, a Brad's Atomic Grape, that needs to be ripped out. He looked, in his defense, he looked... Uh, terrible when I put him in the ground and I was just hoping that um I don't know I was hoping he'd perk back up but that ain't gonna happen so uh he's supposed to look more like that but he looks like that so I need to take him out and put something else in his place uh but yeah otherwise everything's looking really good I'm I'm very pleased I think this trellising system is going to work well this is kind of a standard trellising system in a greenhouse or in a high tunnel um, so obviously it's my first time to use it because I've never grown in a high tunnel, but I think it's going to work well. You could also, 
use this in an outdoor setting, obviously you'd need some sort of setup overhead. Okay, y'all, that is how I am going to be trellising my tomato plants this year. Hopefully this was helpful for you. I know I had a lot of people um, messaging me on Instagram wanting to know how I was going to trellis. Uh, but that's how I'm doing it and um, hopefully it was helpful if it's not gonna work for you there are five million other ways to trellis a plant so find what works for you and go with that um, I probably need to start walking back to the house because I feel like the rains rolling in and I do have a little bit of a walk to get <laughs> to get back indoors so I hope you all have a good day I will see you next time